Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about Sinner Takes All, uh, which is a miniseries that came out in the 90s, uh, along with all the other Venom miniseries that came out. And this one picks up pretty much right where uh, Carnage Unleashed ended up. So if you haven't watched that episode, we did it during Carnage Week, um, a couple, about like two months ago or so. So I will put a link to that episode down below. So if you want to go watch that, so you can kind of know the characters and the setup, because this story does pick up like I said, almost right after. Larry Hama, who wrote that story, he's the writer of this one. And there's like six artists on this book. There's really only like two, uh, but there's inkers that are coming in to help the art uh, to finish the pages on time, I think, was the biggest problem with this book. And the main artist was Greg Luzniak, and he was like the guy who did the first four issues, I believe. Uh, but then there was, uh, you know, who finished it? I think it was a guy named Ted Halstead, and he was like the guy who wrote the or drew the final issue. But in between there, we had like Jimmy Palmiotti, Ken Branch, Scott Koblish. I have the names here of all the inkers: Ralph Cabrera and Keith Aiken, uh, and Jeff. I think Jeff Albright. Did I mention him? Uh, all of them all worked on this book to help make sure the art uh, was done and the book came out on time. And that's kind of why uh, the art in this book is very inconsistent and very kind of all over the place and not clear at times. And you have to have extra exposition and extra dialogue put in just to kind of get what's going on in the frames uh, just because it gets a little confusing. Uh, and then not in a, like a way where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm too dumb to figure out what's going on. It's not really that bad. Um, but it is very inconsistent and honestly uh, the art to me is really bland in this one and uh, i'm also like i like larry hama's gi joe stuff but his venom stuff was just like mostly missed for me like as you guys know uh watching the uh, carnage unleashed episode i was not a big fan of that it was like carnage and they're making a video game out of him and there was like this company that was making a video game based on carnage and then he got to beta test it and then he went into the video game using the symbiote and went through the phone lines to like kill people and you're just like whatever <laughs> like i know i know comics sometimes it's just supposed to be fun and you're supposed to be mindless fun and everything but man it was so bad um this storyline, kind of the same thing. So in the last one, we had the video game company that was trying to like, you know, um, make the video game about Carnage. And then there was also this young girl named Kirsten that kind of like, rode the bus with Venom or Eddie Brock from San Francisco to New York. Uh, so this is like, you know, returning to New York uh, storyline. Um, and she, you know, she was like this like troubled kid and she met this guy online and it was supposed to be a comment on like maybe the dangers of meeting someone online. But then you find out the guy she met online was actually a nice guy and he was some kind of undercover journalist. He got thrown out of a building at the end and paralyzed. He ended up living though, uh, but it did end on a bad note. So uh, the girl, Kirsten, she got called her mom and was like, I can't believe this happened to me. I just met this great guy and I moved to New York and now he's crippled and, you know, this creature Venom took him down and I don't know what to do and blah, blah. And, you know, her mom's like, don't worry, dear. I'll take care of it. She doesn't know this, and apparently her mom, like, she, like Kirsten has no idea that her mom is like a hit woman and like a special killer, like a trained killer. Uh, and so she's like, "Don't worry, baby, mommy will take care of everything." And you're like, "Okay." And so she pops back up in this, like uh, Kirsten's mom, and Kirsten and Clive also do pop up in this storyline. Uh, and this story mostly is not even memorable. I mean, the only thing that's memorable from this story is that this is a story where Anne Weighing. Uh, Venom's ex-wife where she becomes she Venom as they called her or bride of Venom for like uh, one issue in the five issue storyline here uh, and then also there was the Sin Eater uh, there was a new Sin Eater that came up uh, and so as you know the Sin Eater is tied to Eddie Brock's origin and even though he never really met the Sin Eater face to face uh, the real Sin Eater and the fake Sin Eater the one who was claiming to be the Sin Eater his name is Emil Gregg and he was the one who wrote the Daily Globe and he went to a church and confessed his sins and uh, he was the one trying to take credit uh, for the Sin Eater killings because you found out that he was already kind of mentally unstable and he lived in this like you know really crappy apartment in New York and the walls were really thin and the real killer actually lived next door and then the real killer would speak out loud and plan his killings and write on the wall and stuff and uh, Emil heard it and he thought it was a voice in his head and he thought it made him it made him believe he was the actual sin eater uh, and that was kind of how that storyline played out so Emil Gregg does show up in this one and it does kind of tie up at least a few things like little threads left over uh, from the Sin Eater storyline with Spider-Man and Daredevil and the death of Gene DeWolf, but not really. There weren't too many threads left over in that storyline. Uh, after Sin Eater died, it was kind of like, all right, that's kind of the end of this. But they wanted to touch on Emil Gregg, and then they bring in this new guy who wants to be the Sin Eater, and they give a reason for that too. So this storyline is... I don't know. I don't even want to go into super detail about it because it's not really that good. It's it's definitely one of my least favorite Venom stories from the 90s uh, by far. Um, 
but it does have some cool moments in it. Like I said, the Bride of Venom, uh, the new Sin Eater. And it does give a storyline where Venom fights the Sin Eater. And I know recently I was talking to, uh, I think, Demona on my um, on our comment section. And uh, she was saying, isn't Sin Eater, Sin Eater mostly a, a Spider-Man villain? And that is true. Sin Eater 1 is mostly a Spider-Man and Daredevil villain. Uh, but Sin Eater 2, when he pops up, he pretty much only appears in this storyline. In, uh, in the Venom, uh, Sin Eater, Sinner Takes All storyline. So he is kind of a, a main antagonist or uh, for, uh, for Venom. So in this storyline, it starts off and it has Venom kind of just, uh, you know, going around doing his thing. He's on a bus. Someone tries to light him on fire. Again, uh, I think Larry Hama just read things in the newspaper and was just like, oh, I heard about this horrible incident of someone taking a Molotov cocktail and burning someone in the New York subway or something. So wouldn't it be cool if that person happened to be Venom and he like got justice or whatever. And that just seems how Larry Hama handled a lot of his storylines is, oh, I heard about this happening in the news or I heard about this happening in the world. And although I like that uh, to a degree, if a writer handles it well, to me, he just kind of throws it in just to fill pages. Like, I mean, this storyline could have literally been three issues and it was dragged out to five for no reason. Um, the story, you know, from there has uh, Anne Wang. She is now, she's a lawyer, obviously, in the comic books. So this felt more organic than anything. Uh, and then probably the most organic thing in the storyline is that she's a lawyer and she is defending the guy who ran the uh, company, the uh, the video game company that made the Carnage video game. She's kind of on his representation team. So her boss is actually, you know, defending the guy and she's like his aide or something in this storyline. And so she's like part of that system that is trying to, uh, you know, give this guy a benefit of the doubt of the of getting carnage involved in a video game and causing people to die and she's kind of defending him so the new scene leader uh, just like the old one he has the same moral code he shows up and he's like look you're a lawyer you're all lawyers you're all scumbags and you're trying to save this scumbag who ran this company so I'm gonna kill you all so he comes just shows up with a gun and he blows away uh, uh, you know the I can't remember the guy's name I think it's a uh, Fardum something, Fardum Rhodes, Fardum Ray, Reyes or something. Yeah, so that was the guy who ran the company. He gets blown away by the Sin Eater, and then the Sin Eater takes a shotgun and just starts shooting randomly at the other lawyers. He, he gets uh, Ann Wang's boss, I think, and then he actually shoots Ann Wang, uh, and she's injured. Uh, so she gets rushed to the hospital, and Venom, coincidentally, because Larry Hama doesn't really care about, you know, making anything happen organically or finding clever ways to do stuff. Venom just shows up at home. He left his TV on and uh, or shows up at Anne Wang's house, I think, and she left the TV on or something. And uh, and the news is on and it says, Anne Wang was shot and taken to this hospital. And he's just like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I got to go find my, my ex-wife. And that's kind of why he's in New York, too, after the carnage thing is even though he came to New York, uh, you know, from uh, the Knights of Vengeance story and everything and, uh, and Carnage Unleashed, he's apparently came to New York to figure out you know, the truth about the other symbiotes or at least, you know, kill carnage or something. And then now he's like, oh, I guess, uh, you know, I came here to see my wife. And it's like, which reason did you come to New York for, dude? Like, be more consistent. Um, so anyway, he shows up and he's like, uh, you know, sees on the TV coincidentally that she's been taken. So he goes to the hospital and decides to protect her. Uh, and he's watching over her. And there's a guy named Chief Riley, which, again, more lazy writing because at this point the, the, the clone saga is going on. And so it's like, dude, just I know it's, it's not very confusing. Obviously, Chief Riley and Ben Riley are two different characters. But just call your chief anything else, dude. Like, it's just like, why? Like, uh, some of the ideas he commits to, it's just like, just why do that like it's a little nitpicky thing on my end but if you're if you're going to do that just try to limit it a little bit more it's so it you know it just it, you're just like oh he just wanted to put the name riley in there i think he just wanted to write an irish police officer because he he did that in gi joe he wrote like you know very diverse characters and stuff so he just wanted to write irish dialogue where he's like oh me gun isn't working and you're just like oh, okay god all right whatever okay larry hama um but uh, overall, like, you know, after that happens, you know, he's protecting her. The Sin Eater shows up because obviously on the news they announced where Anne Wang was taken, which hospital she was taken to. It was a trap by the police, so they're all waiting. Uh, he comes in, he takes out a couple of police, shoots Chief Riley. Uh, Riley is uh, wearing a bulletproof vest, so he's not killed. And Venom is able to protect Anne from, from dying and getting shot again. And Sin Eater jumps out the window because he's like, all right, I wasn't ready to fight Venom, so I'm going to go regroup and plan ahead and be ready for him next time. So he leaves, and Venom's holding Anne, and she's bleeding, you know, because from her first injury, she's taken off all the machines and everything, and so she's, uh, her wound reopened, and so she's hurting bad. So what Venom does, he, he takes her, and Chief Riley's like, look, get out of here. If you're here to protect her, obviously we can't do it. We just tried and failed. I'm in no condition to stop you, so just get out of here. And you're like, oh, maybe they're setting up like a, you know, like a Batman kind of, uh, you know, Commissioner Gordon relationship here. 
no, not really. That's all that kind of that does, <laughs> and it's pretty much over after that. Chief Riley does pop up later in the story, but it's not really in that regard where he's helping Venom in any way. Uh, so then Venom goes off. He takes Anne Wang and he brings her to like a warehouse, and he uh, tells her he's like, "Look, if I put the symbiote on you, it'll heal you." And the symbiote's kind of like, "Look, I don't want to," you know, like she's she, you know, she's it's getting jealous, a little jealous of her, and he's like, "Look, do this, or I separate from you completely forever." And the suit's like, fine, we love you, Eddie, we're going to do this. So it bonds with her, and it slowly starts to heal her. And while Eddie's watching her, these two random thugs show up to, like, fight Eddie, and uh, he's trying to fight them off, and he's unable to, but it doesn't matter because Anne now is She-Venom, or Bride of Venom, and she gets up, and she attacks the guys and kills them. And uh, and then once she kills them, the suit goes back to Eddie, and then she sees this horrible thing that she's done, and it's it's affected her big time she's killed somebody she's chewed off like a guy's arm and then beat another guy to death and she was it freaks her out i mean like it honestly would you know and uh, she's not, not a violent person she's not a bad person and this just really freaked her out so uh she kind of starts to try to distance herself from eddie and she's like i'm going back home i'm getting out of here and eddie like goes off to look for the sin eater and then when she gets home uh the kirsten that girl from the last storyline her mom the hit woman is there and she's like all right i'm gonna lay a trap for venom i found out that you're his ex-wife I'm here. She ties Ann up, and she's like, "All right, I'm. We're gonna wait for Venom to come home." And she's like, "I told Ed, you know Eddie not to come to me anymore, so you're wasting your time." And she's like, "Nah, he'll come. Don't worry. Like I, I have faith he'll come." And then she calls her daughter, and she's like, "Hey, Kirsten. Uh, yeah, you know that guy you told me about? Well, I'm in New York. I'm in you know this apartment, and I'm totally gonna like kill Venom." And she's like, "What, Mom? You can't do that. You're not a killer." And she's like, "Yep, I'm a trained killer." And so <laughs> Kirsten's like, "No, wait." And then she goes, "Clive, my mom is a killer, and she's gonna kill Venom." And then Clive's like, "Well, I'm a." good person because remember in the last story he was like a super good person so he's like i'm a good person and i don't want someone to die because of me so we need to go to that apartment and we need to stop your mom from killing uh venom <laughs> and you're like what like what i thought she wanted revenge on venom it's like whatever and then we cut to emil Gregg, who was the guy who claimed to be the sin eater in the original storyline of uh you know of where that led to Venom, you know, being ostracized or Eddie Brock being ostracized and, and kicked out of his job. He was the one who was writing Eddie Brock and feeding him information. So Emil Gregg pops up in a story. He goes to this shelter. Uh, he is, you know, obviously homeless. And there's like this shelter that's, you know, taking in vets and other people and giving them little cots to lay on. And Emil Gregg signs in, goes over, lays in his cot. And then the police show up, Chief Riley, everyone, they show up thinking he might be the new Sin Eater. So they arrest him. They do some questioning. Turns out he might not be the guy. So they're about to let him go. And some woman shows up uh, who was like, you killed my son. Or the Sin Eater killed my son or killed somebody I love. And then this old woman like shoots Emil Gregg and kills him right in police custody. And uh, and so you can see the city starting to unravel. The Sin Eater is definitely like him being back has caused a lot of problems. Him doing the public shooting at the beginning, killing lawyers and, you know, and uh, defendant and everything. Like he is he clearly set the city ablaze again. But why other superheroes and Spider-Man and other people are not getting involved, no idea at all, because it doesn't matter, because like Larry Hama doesn't want to write all that stuff. If you want to make the issue, you know, they could have made this five issues feel filled. Like, it could have been like a good full five issues if like Spider-Man or Daredevil got involved in this storyline. Uh, but they kept it to Venom, which is fine. It's his own miniseries. Uh, but a lot of it, you're just like, why isn't other people getting involved with the Sin Eater if he's causing this much trouble and, and having this much effect on, you know, just humanity in general in New York? Uh, he's freaking everybody out. So uh, Emil Gregg is now dead, but then you find out the guy who was laying in the cot next to him, much like the original Sin Eater, uh, he was sitting right next to Emil when he got arrested. And his name is Michael Ingalls Shirt or Sherp or something like that. <laughs> He's got a long last name. And uh, he is actually uh, like a, a Gulf War uh, veteran who is suffering PTSD. And he's heard Gr uh, Greg Miller or Greg Miller, uh, Emil Gregg. He's heard Emil Gregg like ramble at night in his sleep about, you know, you know, sin and, you know, taking people out and like what the sin eater, what the stuff he used to hear in his bedroom. And so it kind of like helped twist this guy. And so now this guy, so sin eater almost in a way is like this verbal contagious thing, which I think is, I think that's kind of neat if you look at it that way. That's not what Larry Hama and, and other writers were doing, but I think that's kind of neat is that it's, it, could, it could travel and corrupt weak minds, you know? So maybe we'll see a Sin Eater 3 at one point, not like the ghost Sin Eater that came later, but like an actual Sin Eater 3 and who was in this room with these guys when it all happened. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so Michael E., uh, the new Sin Eater, he uh, he gets fight in a fight with Venom. He sets up all these bombs. The, the chief and the police are outside uh, this building waiting for it to explode. It does, and Venom, like, helps crumble the things because he's hoping the, the weight of the building will fall down. And cr he knows he'll get out of it, but he's hoping it'll crush Sin Eater because he's not a superhuman person. He's just super tactical because he's a Gulf War soldier. Um, so, you know, he's 
you know, Venom tries, but uh, Sin Eater gets away. Venom goes back home uh, to uh, to see Aunt, uh, Anne Wang. He's like, all right, I guess I'll leave New York, but I'm going to go see Anne one more time. He shows up. Kirsten's mom's there. And Kirsten and uh, Clive <laughs> like are all there. And uh, and then he gets into a fight with her mom. And, they, and she's trying to kill him. She's trying to kill Anne. Uh, uh, Kirsten is screaming like, mom, don't do this. Please don't do this. And then the Sin Eater shows up. And Sin Eater comes in for one last attempt to kill Venom and kill Anne Wang. And then he sees this like trained assassin. He's like, you're a sinner too. I'm going to kill you. So he has a bomb strapped to his chest. He's getting ready to set it off. But Venom is able to dismantle it. And then for one scene again, uh, Anne Wang becomes She-Venom, fights off uh, Kirsten's mom, beats her down. And then when uh, uh, Sin Eater is like, no, I'm gonna, we're going to kill somebody here today. If I'm going to die, I'm going to take someone with me. So he grabs Kirsten and he jumps out a window. And just like how Clive fell out of a window and Venom didn't save him, this time Venom's like, all right, I'm going to jump after and save uh, her. I'm not going to let Kirsten die. So he dro drops down, grabs her, separates her from Sin Eater, and saves her life, and Sin Eater hits the pavement and is super dead. Uh, so he's like super, super dead. Uh, so no more Michael E here. And uh, and after that, Venom like lands, shows that he you know he's still kind of a hero. He feels bad what happened to her. Uh, Clive you know wheels over, and they start talking. And then he's like, look, get away from me. I don't care that you're still alive. You're still a monster. You still did this to me. Uh, but thank you for saving her. And, and Eddie's like, yeah, 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 happy endings, whatever. And then upstairs, uh, the Kirsten's mom gets up and she's like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get away and I'm gonna kill another day. And then Anne walks up behind her and like hits her with a lamp and knocks her unconscious so the police can arrest uh, Kirsten's mom. And that's kind of how the story ends. And then it kind of the last page is like Venom kind of being like, yeah, I don't, I could go back to Anne, but I don't want to because every time I'm with somebody, whether it's her or Beck or anyone, I just seem to ruin their lives. And no one likes to look at my face. They they only want to see the Eddie face. And uh, you know because uh, Anne says that to him at some point in the story. So you can see he's not, you know, uh, just knows he can't connect with people the way he used to. And so him and the symbiote decide to kind of go away and not rejoin with Anne, uh, which doesn't last because we will talk about in a, one of our next episodes coming up this week or later, ne maybe next week, uh, we will talk about the death of Anne Wang and how Venom got back into her life one last time before she died. Uh, but this storyline, have you guys read it? Uh, what do you think of it? I know I probably didn't explain it that well in the sense of like I wasn't excited about talking about the story. I think there's some good moments in it. Like I said, Larry Hama is a good writer, and I like his G.I. Joe stuff and some of his other work. But when it came to Venom, he's like two for two, at least in the ones we've reviewed so far. But I know there's going to be like The Hunted or License to Kill and some of those other ones. Those ones actually kind of worked for me on some level. So when those trade paperbacks come out later in the fall, right before the movie comes out, we will definitely talk about those. But for now, we're going to probably skip. Uh, we're going to skip Along Came a Spider, which is the next storyline. And we're going to do that in our Scarlet Spider show, which will, the first episode will premiere on Thursday, coming up this Thursday. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And then also, like I said, we're going to skip all the other 90s stuff that came out. Uh, License to Kill, The Hunger, The Hunted, uh, Tooth and Claw. We're going to skip all those for now because they're going to re-release them in trade paperbacks closer to the movie coming out. So we'll do reviews of them and discussions of them at that point. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the Marvel vs. DC stuff, Carnage vs. Batman, uh, with Spider-Man and Joker involved. And then we're also going to do a storyline where Superman fights Venom with Spider-Man involved as well. So we're going to do that in one of our next episodes coming up this week. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then we got Scarlet Spider on Thursday, and then we will jump through the 90s stuff and get to the Spider-Man Next Chapter stuff where we talk about Anne Wang's death. And then after that, we are going to start our countdown to uh, CinemaCon. And during that week, we are going to count that, like leading up to that uh, April 23rd. So during that week, uh, we are going to talk about the Ultimate Universe. And each day, we're going to do a different trade paperback from the Ultimate Universe. And we're going to talk about the Ultimate Spider-Man video game which uh, further further told the story of Eddie Brock and the Ultimate Universe. So that'll be a lot of fun. So as always, guys, we're going to have a lot of fun on this channel. But anytime movie news pops up, I will definitely talk about that with you guys as well. And hopefully we'll get some soon. But I have a feeling it's going to be a dead for a little while, at least until April 23rd when CinemaCon drops. We'll probably get a ton of information then, or at least enough to make a ton more movie-related videos off of. So I look forward to that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.